have a photo for you uh, of something you probably recognize. The Cowlitz tribe calls her Loet Lot La. Would you practice that with me? Loet Lot La. Loet La La. You might want to say it a couple of times because it's taken me days. Loet Lot La. Loet Lot La means the smoker. In 2013, Loet Latla was listed in the National Register of Historic Places for its significance as a traditional cultural property to the Cowlitz tribe and the Confederated Tribes of the Yakima Nation. At the time, Tribal Council Chairman William E. La said about Loet Latla, for millennia, the mountain has been a place where tribal members went to seek spiritual guidance. She has erupted many times in our memory, but each time has rebuilt herself anew. She has demonstrated a slow, patient path of restoration is the successful one. The Pumice Plain is just north of the Loet Latla Crater near Spirit Lake. Has anybody here ever hiked on the Pumice Plain or through the Pumice Plain? The Truman Trail is how you, I haven't done it. Um, the, this valley, of course, took the brunt of the 1980 eruption. And in some places, it was covered with up to 600 feet of mud, rocks, and debris. The name Pumice Plain, of course, vividly describes what that area was like. There wasn't a living thing anywhere near the Pumice Plain, unlike other parts around Loet Latla. One look at photos and it seems clear that life could not, would not return but miraculously, you saw a little glimpse on the picture. But miraculously, a few years after the eruption, scientists found life on the pumice plain, a prairie lupine. Now, the prairie lupine is unique in that it can get nitrogen needed for growth from both the ground and the air, which really made it a perfect candidate for the pumice plain. Most likely, the first lupine came uh, to this desolate area, maybe through bird droppings or wind blowing a seed from miles away. But the prairie lupine started to grow and then caught blowing debris and other organic material and attracted herbivores and therefore their droppings. And together, slowly over time, they created their own microhabitat, offering soil and seeds so that plants could grow. And the pumice plain transformed into what it is today, a lively ecosystem developing ever so slowly and not so easily. Today, you will find meadows with wildflowers. You will find um, shrubs and elk. It's absolutely amazing and miraculous and inspiring. It's what uh, Reverend David Henson, an Episcopal priest, would call a beautiful incoherence. It seems that the nature of creation always bends towards life even in the most desolate and unimaginable situations. On Palm Sunday, nine years ago, Mindy Corcoran, a member of the United Methodist Church of the Resurrection in Kansas City, was in the midst of regular life. She had one son headed towards a singing competition and another headed towards a lacrosse game. 
Her father took her eldest to the singing competition while she went to the lacrosse game with her younger son. The lacrosse game got canceled and so she packed up and went to the singing competition. But when she got to the Overland Park Jewish Community Center, she learned that her father and son had been shot and killed by a white supremacist intent on killing Jews. The inexplicable happened to Mindy. Life was torn from her and her family. And her response was and has been a beautiful incoherence of life emerging in a desolate time. Mindy decided to attend the community prayer vigil that evening to support her son's friends who she learned were going to be there. She said she was surprised to see so many people came and cared. At the vigil, Mindy said, we were just having life. We were just having life. And I want you all to know that we're going to have more life. And I want you all to have more life too. At the news conference later, Mindy said, God didn't do this. There are evil acts in this world. Some good will come out of it. I don't know what it is, but something good will come. From her responses immediately following and in the years to come, it is clear that Mindy deeply believed and still does believe that new life is possible, that love is stronger than hate, that there is a light that no dark, darkness can extinguish, that flora and fauna can return and thrive on the pumice plain, and that the arc of God's story always, always, always bends towards life. Mindy's faith gave her hope. She trusted the resurrection. The resurrection itself is a beautiful incoherence. Jesus suffered a horrific death and was laid to rest in a tomb. Two days later, his body wasn't there. Chris, scripture tells us that he wasn't stolen, that somehow, some way, unbelievably, Jesus lived. The resurrection and our own experiences of life and death and life beyond death are difficult to comprehend. It brings up questions, curiosities, and deep longing for us. What does it mean that Jesus rose from the dead? And what in the world does it have to do with my life? Is there any reason to hope in the face of the inevitability of death? In light of all of the violence, the suffering, the injustice in this world, how is it possible to live with hope and resolve, with confidence and even with joy? We respond to questions like these, questions of our faith and others, just like the disciples did in the resurrection story. Some of us be, might be like Simon Peter, confused and discombobulated, trying to gain any information that might lead us to understanding what is going on. Or we might be like Mary, devastated, devastated, but full of love and care, wanting to fix things, wanting to honor her friend. Or we might be like the beloved disciple in the story, having immediate belief in exactly what we're not quite sure, 
but not truly understanding what's happening. Unfortunately, there's no scientific study that can give us our answers that we desire for what in the world happened with the resurrection. What we do have, though, is a powerful story and a mysterious experience of life and love triumphing over death and hate. The resurrection fundamentally changed Mary and the disciples. They were the seeds of a movement that we are still a part of today. It has inspired and changed people for thousands of years, from Diedrich Bonhoeffer and Dr. King to Mary Corcoran and many of us in this room. You see, the resurrection is not something to intellectually assent to. Instead, the Easter story invites us to experience and participate in the ongoing reality of resurrection in our daily lives and in the world around us, to see life in the midst of death and love in the midst of hate. Over the past decade, Mindy Corcoran has dedicated herself to spreading kindness and understanding in this world. She created the Faith Always Wins Foundation, which promotes dialogue for the betterment of the world through kindness, faith, and healing. It promotes the Seven Days Make a Ripple Change the World campaign, which focuses on building understanding and kindness through the cultivation of interfaith relationships. She started a business called Workplace Healing, which focuses on bringing healing into the workplace to support those who are returning to work after a traumatic event. Mindy found her way to experience and participate in the ongoing reality of the resurrection in her daily life. She says, my heart does not hurt when I do what I'm supposed to do. The work I do is focused on overcoming evil with acts of kindness, overcoming evil with understanding. Each day, the resurrection occurs. Moments of light shining in the darkness, life emerging from death and love breaking through hatred, each one a beautiful incoherence. Winds are continually blowing lupine seeds into the lifeless parts of our lives and our communities. The seeds are blowing through whenever we decide to let go of a grudge we've been holding on to that has hardened off part of ourselves and every so slowly resentment and anger give way to possibility and openness. Lupine seeds are blowing through when a relationship ends. And after a time of anger or pain or doubt, joy, peace, and a new normal emerge. Lupine seeds blow through and take hold whenever we boldly reach out for help with an addiction, thereby, uh, thereby allowing life as God intends to start reemerging. Lupine seeds blow through whenever we let go of judgment, when we volunteer our time, when we raise our voice with others to ask for sensible gun legislation or for more food access 
for the kids in our community or so many other things that work for the common good. In those times, lupine seeds take hold in us and new life emerges, sometimes quickly and sometimes it's a slow, patient path of restoration. My friends, the spirit of the living Christ, the risen Christ, moves around us all the time, beckoning us to join in the work of the regeneration of our lives and the world so that we might have more life and so that together we might more clearly reflect the vision of Jesus, the kingdom of God, in our midst. The good news of Easter is this. If life can return to the pumice plain at La Wetlatla, then life can return to the pumice places of our lives. Small lupines of possibility, hope, and love can take root in us each and every day, can grab hold of other passing seeds of joy and peace, thereby starting an ecosystem of mutual respect the common good, networks of care and connection. So let's engage in the work of Easter. Let us be Easter people, opening our hearts and our lives to the promise and the possibility of the resurrection. May it be so. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.